Yamamoto Jocho talks about the code of samurai. In the world, the essence of the code for a samurai is death. When you are placed in a situation of living or surviving, do not hesitate to choose to die. There is nothing to worry about. Rush in and be killed. That is all. People in other clans may say that is to die for nothing, but let them say no, say so. They are only trying to escape from death. We are not. In a situation in which you may live or die, it is impossible to make things flow as you want. Everybody prefers to live, but you will be called a coward if you should survive without achieving your purpose. On the other hand, if you lose your life without achieving your purpose, you will have died a miserable death, but you will not be called a coward at all. It is a crucial turning point in judgment. It is a way of dying most suitable for a samurai. Therefore, every morning and evening, imagine yourself being killed on the battlefield and abandon yourself as dead, and you will not make a serious mistake as a samurai as long as you live. 3. A retainer has only to think of his lord. Nothing could be more desirable. Everyone in Saga has been born and brought up in such an honorable clan. We have been greatly indebted to our lords since the beginning, so what we should do is to simply devote ourselves to our lord. Even an ordinary person will be rich raised some day if he is totally faithful to the Lord. Cleverness and artistic skills might be of help in some ways, but it is worthless to serve the Lord with art and cleverness alone. 4. A retainer can accomplish his, accomplish his duty only with loyalty, loyalty to the Lord. If he is interested in reasoning and artistic hobbies, it never fails to distract his attention from performing his duty. To serve the Lord with some artistic technique is not praiseworthy either. A retainer has only to do his duty with a sincere heart. Say to yourself, without prudence and talent, I am just a country boy, and I know I will be of no use to the Lord, and yet I am a servant of His. I do not care whether He treats me generously or cruelly. I do not care whether He remembers me or not, but I know how deeply I am indebted to Him for His consideration towards us so I am ready to serve him with tears of delight. Such a way of thinking is not difficult to keep in mind. Almost anyone is capable of making such resolution. But few people share that feeling in our clan. To have such a feeling is very important. A retainer with such frame of mind can be called a retainer of top quality. He can be compared to a man in love. However coldly he is treated, he will think of the other. If he happens to see him, he will be surely determined to give up his life for him willingly. There is no better example than a man's secret love for another. Deepest love lies in the heart of a man who will not reveal it as long as he lives. He may be moved to tears of joy, joy even when he cruelly treated by him. Even after noticing that the other 
has been false, his longing will not be distinguished but will go on burning. The relation between the Lord and the Retainer is similar to this. It is totally different from notions of right and wrong. 264. Make a resolution to bear the whole clan on your two shoulders and you can make your dream a reality. However, your resolution may weaken in the course of your training. Let me tell you a secret to prevent that. I strongly advise you to chant the following four oaths every morning. A. I will not hesitate to be killed in action. B. I shall be willing to serve my Lord. C. Let me be dutiful to my parents. D. I will work for the good of others. If you chant these oaths every morning in front of the Shinto and Buddhist altars, your mental strength will double. By repeating the practice, you will not fail to make progress because the Shinto gods and the Lord Buddha must think of favoring you with their patronage. 1. The first oath, I will not hesitate to be killed in battle, means that you should be prepared to show your bravery on the battlefield. The ultimate object of the second oath, I shall be willing to serve my lord, is promotion to the post of the administrative retainer, where you can admonish the lord regarding the clan's government. The third oath, let me be dutiful to my parents, means that Filial duty is nothing but faithfulness to the Lord. The last oath, I shall work for the good of others, is to do your best to guide those around you so that they will become good retainers of the Lord. 20. In an emergency and without anyone around to depend upon, consult the four oaths. Immediately you will get an answer. You do not have to ask for anything else. 109. Some people are born with the gift of cleverness. Others have to take quite a long time to work that work out an idea. Not everyone is born with talent, but if you if you arm yourself with the four oaths you will miraculously be able to think up good ideas. We can work out a long-term vision by thinking seriously for ourselves. However, all of us tend to think self-centeredly and end up as a failure. We are mean and selfish beings after all. However, if we arm ourselves with the concept of the four oaths, we will hardly stray from the path. 5. Lord Naoshige said, To be killed in action is Samurai's final achievement. Scores of people could not kill a man determined on such a way of dying. You cannot put yourself in such a frame of mind with an ordinary discretion. Dis dis discard your life and get killed in action. That is all. Prudence is an obstacle for samurai. It only makes him fall behind. There is no need for either loyalty or filial piety in themselves. Readiness to throw away your life is what is required. Loyalty and filial piety are naturally included in that. 114. According to old men of bravery, you can fight with 
conspicuous failure at the front with the resolve to break into the enemy first of all your comrades. You must also be determined to fall with your head facing the enemy when you die in battle. 163. When you're placed in a critical situation, you're likely to make a fool of yourself if you have not made preparations in advance. Reading books and listening to wise men can also prepare you for such occasions. Especially in the samurai way of life, you should be preparing your mind night and day because nobody knows what awaits him tomorrow. Think of the many situations you might encounter and make your preparations for them. Victory or defeat is a matter of chance, but do not put yourself to shame in battle. It is of no matter it is of no matter if you are killed. If you are defeated, take revenge right away. No cleverness or skill is needed. A real samurai rushes in with the resolve to die in action. At such a time, you will never fail to discover your true self. 56. It is not enough to keep calm in a disaster. Rejoice and sail on in the heavy storm. Then you're in the same mental state with a man of bravery. There is a saying, the higher the water rises, the higher the boat will be raised. 116. Which is more faithful as a retainer to give up your life for the Lord or to kill an enemy? The answer is simple. The former is much more faithful. 172. A samurai must never show faint-heartedness by any means. Do not forget this as long as you live. If you show any sign of weakness, it will be seen through. 143. A samurai hates being behind in anything. If you should inadvertently blurt out, I am timid, so I would flee from the front at once. You would be despised as a coward. Phrases like terrible, what pain, are absolutely taboo. You should never let such words pass your lips. If you are hard by others, you will be thought as a worthless samurai. Be careful. 118. If you are habitually resolved to be second to none in bravery, you will be useful in an emergency. Habits of speech and manner show your personality and lead to opportunities. Particularly important is your way of speaking. You do not have to bear your heart in public. People around you know who you are by your daily behavior. 119. To take a moderate course is, a significant, is significant in life. For a samurai, however, this does not apply. He should maintain a high spirit to exceed others in bravery. In archery, the correct posture is required for daily training. You can hit the mark by shooting arrows by your right hand slightly downward, but in action it is different. Say to yourself day in and day out that you will exceed all the men of eminence in action and that you will fell the enemy general with your spear. Then you will not fail to achieve your dream as written in an old book of martial arts. 
a samurai should maintain such a spirit in his daily life. 84. A samurai cannot be too proud in bravery. He should be ready to be killed at any time, anywhere. He has not only to maintain that determination, but also to be careful in his statement and behavior. To become a good retainer, he should consult his fellows and elders about important matters. Remember, your days should be spent for the good of others as long as you live. There is no need to know anything about financial accounts. 242. You're wrong to think that your home cannot be associated with the battlefield, for then you will not be in time for any unexpected call up. These often occur, in fact. You should be prepared for it at any time. Do not forget that you are a samurai even in your own house. Otherwise, you cannot be dependent upon, depended upon at the front either. 277. An ancient samurai said, Decide within your seven breaths. General Takanobu said, Long consideration makes you hesitant. Lord Naoshige said, Seven out of ten tasks will fail when lingered over. A samurai should deal with everything prompt, promptly. As long as you linger, you cannot think properly. If you are determined and unruffled, you can make a good decision within seven breaths. 122. A samurai must speak decisively. His bravery shows in every single statement, whether in peaceful or violent times. A decisive statement made at the right time is a flower which blooms in a samurai's heart. 142. It is very important to speak out in good time, in a disaster or misfortune. It is the same when you greet a person. In each case, you have to make a suitable statement to the other party. Words fit for the situation will never fail to impress him. I have had such experiences. You should keep yourself ready to speak well in any situation, though that is not easy to explain briefly. It is a matter of heart. I am afraid a man of little sentiment will not understand it. 285. Imagine being addressed by the Lord on some occasion. If you withdrew silently, you would appear perplexed. You should say something to him in return, whether his command is pleasing or not. You have to train yourself to be able to make a suitable response in such situation. Imagine you are appointed to some post. If you feel glad or proud, that will appear on your face. I have seen some persons like that in the past. How ugly they looked. If you are humble in heart, you will say to yourself at such a time, how embarrassed I feel to be told to take over such a post. I know well I am not capable of it. What shall I do? If you hold such a humble opinion that will never fail to appear on your face and make you look modest, even if you do not express it in words. On the contrary, a person frivolous and capricious will probably commit a blunder sometime in the future. 72. A retainer who leaves himself 
completely to the Lord, will not brew evil ideas towards him. If the Lord is supposed, supported by such retainers, the clan will be secure. Looking back over my own service, I cannot but think that there are quite a few retainers who flatter the influential Lord with cleverness, prudence, and artistic talent. However, when the Lord retires or passes away, they turn their back on him and try to gain the favor of other promising masters. That is despicable behavior. Most people, high salaried or low salaried, salaried, clever or artistic, behave quite faithfully towards the Lord at first. However, when they are placed in an emergency, they hesitate to sacrifice their lives for him. It is a rather ugly fact. In contrast, once in a while, someone who usually seems to be of no help turns out to be a match for a thousand in a critical situation. He can make himself so because he is ready to be one mind and one flesh with the Lord. It might seem to have happened long ago that the retainer would maintain a strong bond with his master and would value his honor highly, but it is not so. You will be a good retainer if only you make yourself one mind and one flesh with him. 10. A priest said, You cannot reach the other side of the river unless you know its depth and currents. Otherwise, you will only get drowned halfway. As he said, if you only try to serve the Lord without knowing his likes and dislikes as well as the social situation, you cannot make yourself helpful to him but might rather ruin yourself as a retainer. It is quite stupid to flatter him in order to gain his favor from the beginning. Take time to make a preliminary inspection of his character and then serve him in such a way that he will grow fond of you. 211. You should compliment a medi mediocre and shy lord on his good points so that he may perform his duty faultlessly. He will gain confidence gradually. On the other hand, if he is clever and strong-minded, you had better make yourself look a bit hard to deal with. Then he will ask himself, what will he say if I do this? To make yourself such a person is pure faithfulness for him. If he thinks all his attendants are servile and easy to deal with, he will become arrogant. Then, however faithfully his attendants behave to him, all their efforts will end in vain. It is regrettable that few notice this. Sagara Kuma and Harada Kichi Uemon were such types of men. Lord Tsunashige would ask for advice from Harada Kichi Uemon even after he retired from his post to his gratification. You may think it is impossible to reach that stage, but it is not. It can be, pos it can be possible if you exert yourself to the utmost for at least 10 years. I have also had similar experiences. Is it not deplorable to refrain from efforts to make yourself indispensable to the clan? Why not aim at becoming a second Nobukata or Takatomo? If you're neglected by the Lord, it is impossible to serve him in any way. 
you should be aware of this point and make him take more, take more and more interest in you. 215 Note, Harada Kichiuemon was an important retainer of the first three lords. He died in 1714, aged 75. Note, Nobutaka was a brave retainer of another clan. He was killed in a war in 1547. Note, Takatomo was an administrative retainer trusted by Tokugawa Tsunayoshi, the fifth shogun. He died in 1714, aged 68. Every morning, you have to pray to the Lord, your parents, the guardian god of the village, and Lord Buddha. As long as you make much of the Lord, your parents will be pleased. Lord Buddha and the gods will also acknowledge your sincerity. A samurai has only to rely on the Lord. When you think of the Lord with all your heart, you will become aware of him constantly. 32. As I wrote in the Gukenshu, a retainer's duty is completed in being appointed as an administrative retainer, getting involved in government of the clan and giving his opinions to the Lord. Anything else is of little or no importance. However, there is hardly anyone who understands this. It is true that lots of people flattering the Lord and high-ranking retainers with selfish ambition are promoted. But none are ambitious to be appointed as an administrative retainer. Some men of spirit are not interested in service but are absorbed in reading books of essays and poetry. They do not think it good to be greedy for power. Such writers as Kenko and Saigyo are cowards who are afraid to serve in public. Since they gave up being samurai, they produced such books to entertain readers. Those who have renounced the world or retired seniors should be allowed to read their books, but a samurai has to devote himself to the service of the Lord, to the Lord, not only in the middle of the struggle for honor and desires, but even in hell. 342 Note the Gukenshu was written by Yamamoto Jojo in 1708 and was given to his adopted son. Note, Kenko was the 14th century hermit known for his book of essays. Note, Saigyo was a 12th century poet. It is most important as a retainer to admonish others in order to correct their defe defects. You must do this from deep compassion, but it is not easy. It is rather painstaking, though, to judge others as good or bad and make remarks about them is quite easy. 15. 